This is KHQA Sports. Well, tip top of the evening, everybody, and welcome to Sports Final, where Boxing Day just happens to be one heck of a basketball holiday here in West Central Illinois with tournament action near and far. And nowhere was the cash out any better or more emotional today than Bloomington Normal. And it starts with an upset of epic magnet proportions. Seismic, if you will, as Camp Point Central beats the number one team in the state and the number one seed, St. Thomas More of Champaign. 49 to 42 is the first time in the history of that tournament that a 16 seed has upset the number one seed, which means Matt Long's team moves on to play Fairbury Prairie Central coming up in the winner's bracket at 9 o'clock on Saturday. Very emotional week for Camp Point Central. I saw a number of the girls on Twitter tonight hashtagging Play for Angie, uh, obviously an allusion to the death of Angie Schwagmeyer, the outstanding Central alum who died last week in a car wreck down in St. Louis. So big time win for Matt Long and company. Our congratulations. And now here's Will Wilson. Well, we are going to stay in Bloomington. Q&D taking on the number eight seed. So this is a pretty good matchup for them. Let's go here to the highlights if we can. They would be taking on Kankakee, Bishop McNamara in this one, and the Raiders shot the lights out in this thing early on. Ben Welper, though, going to be doing his thing early inside feed from Austin Ritter. He gets the lay-in more from him. He was just having his way early on in this one. Turn around, uses the window to get that one to go, and then just before the quarters end, the inbound pass, Justin Bodorf spots up for three. He cans that one. Raiders down 16 to 14 after one. Then the junior Tanner Stuckman, he got hot. How about that? Hits the three right there. Nothing but nylon from him. We'd see Drew Eaton kick it out to Mr. Stuckman again and he would can that one as well. And then it was number 32 cleaning up the garbage on the inside. The Raiders would be down 32 to 31 at the half and in the second half they would fall behind again a little later on but they would mount a comeback and Aubrey Reese gonna hit a corner three to put the Raiders ahead 82 to 80 they'd go on to win by that margin as they take down Bishnup McNamara 82 to 80 they get Rockford Lucran tomorrow at 9 p.m. let's head over to Carrollton uh, indeed let us talk about the last ever Carrollton tournament being played this year as a round robin. Let's go on to the video if we can. Griggsville Perry taking on Brussels in this one. Kayla Bradshaw to Riley Bradshaw. It was that kind of day. Huge lead at that point and the Tornadoes just having fun from that point forward. Mr. Riley Bradshaw with a steal. Hooks it ahead to Jordan Dehart who comes up with the breaks. Hits it and all, everybody goes flying by. Easy bucket for him. Skyler Miller from three. He knocks that down. Lead is about 40 at this point. It would just continue to grow. Caleb Bradshaw, he had 20 points of the day including the fallaway jumper Kobe style right here. Things were so easy for Griggsville Perry in this game. They started playing dunk a lot and they would try. They were spectacular misses. A big travel right there from Joseph Myers. Then Joseph Myers trying to clean one off the glass right here. None of this worked, but it sure was fun to watch as Griggsville Perry gets the win big time, 78-47. to 47. Unfortunately for the Tornadoes, heartbreak in their second game, they let a 14-point lead slide away and lose to Calhoun, 77-76. to 76. How about Beardstown trying to take down the host team, Carrollton? That's Cody Leonard, Cody Leonard the all-state linebacker. He's intimidating even without the pads. Early on, Luke Gillingham spotting his team to a nice lead with a three right here. Beardstown trying desperately to get back into this thing, down eight early. Isaac Gregory with a nice take right here. Then it's the big fella, Gus Vermillion, doing his thing in the low blocks as well. Beardstown, though, could never really find any traction. The Tigers go down to defeat in this one, 59 to 42, but they would bounce back on the nightcap and beat Brussels by the final count of 65 to 30. Now, from Macomb, here's Will. Macomb Western Tournament. Macomb taking on Illini Central in this one. This one well over early. The Bombers just going to keep adding to it. Grant had it. He would be driving. He would be getting the bucket right there. And then we get some of the guys off the bench as Macomb had a big league in this one. How about EJ Green, the big fella, running the floor, using his muscle as he gets the put in to go. Number 50 doing some nice work. And then Bryce Weston, he'd be turning and he'd be shooting. And the bench would be going crazy when this one fell. Macomb has no problem today as they take it. 59 to 19 over Illini Central. How about Pittsfield? They would be taking on number two Rockridge, Corbin Personette, trying to do everything he could in the interior tonight. Inside feed to Personette early on. He's going to go through the double team right here. Such muscle from him. He gets that one to go. And then we'd see more from Personette right here. Rowley Phillip, nice pass. The sophomore, he's going to get the basket and the foul. He was a force for the Sockies in the first half in this one. And then we'd see Jonah Molesky 
looking to bring his squad back as he hits the corner three right there. And then we'd see more of Corbin. Corbin just being Corbin, using the window. He finished with 12 points on the night. Rock Ridge was just too much tonight, though. These kids are really good as they would pull away from Pittsfield tonight. 60 to 39. Saukies now 5 and 6 on the year. Illini West looked very sharp in Macomb early on in this one. Early on in the morning, I should say, as they got things a rolling. We'd see Colton Mellinger. He'd be getting the ball shortly after Nolan Ard. He's been so big for the Chargers this year. Just very reliable, bringing the ball up the court. Colt Mellinger going to get that one in the lane. Nice little one-handed finish from Mr. Mellinger. And then Ard, he'd be breaking down the D, dishing things out. Mr. Mellinger again, finding the three ball. And then how about Mellinger to Braden Bennett as he'd get his hands on this one. Then Bennett be over in the corner. And Braden Bennett would be stroking it from the far side right there as he bangs that one home. Line out West up as many as 13, and they would go on and take this one 55 to 44 in this ball game. Now let's go on to some of the scores to see who all these guys will be playing. Line out Bluffs, they get it done over Canton today in overtime, so they'll be taking on IDub tomorrow at 5 p.m. Also, Metamora, number one ranked team, and they get take down Brown County big time tonight, 66 to 29. Carter Lewis, 11 in that ball game. Central takes down Farmington, 53 to 29. Taylor Hyman, 17 points in that ball game. And we have one more score to pass on to in the fourth quarter right now. Wes Hancock, that's the last time we checked. Hopefully Chris gets the score before the show ends. 32-31 at that point. At Waverly today, West Central, a winner over North back. 44-40 was your final in that ball game. Moving on now, girls' side of things at Beardstown. Unity taking on Illini Central. The Lady Mustangs unbeaten. They showed up for warm-ups today in their ugly Christmas sweaters. Hey, it worked out for them. Everything worked out for Jordan Hildebrand in the first half of this game, except for this one putback. I don't think she missed a shot, but she made up for it right here. 14 points in the day for Jordan. She was beastly in this game, taking over in the low blocks. Nobody could remotely stop her in this one. Then it's Claire Raby doing her thing from distance. That's a two because the toes were on the line. Still good enough to spot her team to a nice lead. You know what, though? Illini Central wouldn't go away in this game, so Jordan Hildebrand just kept chipping away in this one. As I mentioned, 14 points as Unity gets the win. 47 to 40 is your final. Unity would advance. Inside of their bracket, Liberty a winner early in the morning over Route, but Liberty is felled by McComb down the stretch, so it will be McComb taking on a really good Unity team tomorrow. That McComb score, 66 to 54. If you will advance the scores, my friends in the back, 66 to 54. That means it will be McComb versus Unity on Saturday. How about Illini West taking on Illini Central on the day? Grant Supernaut's team finding all kinds of scoring options on this day, starting with the Finchula right here. It's Josie Finch knocking down the short jumper right there. Big day as well on the interior from Shelby White. She had 12 points providing presence against Illini Central in this ballgame. Nice take for her. Also a big day for Aubrey Carlisle. Great take for her off the spin right here from Miss Michaela Gronwald. And eventually you will see Aubrey come up to the top of the paint and knock down that bucket. Josie Finch, as I mentioned, a good day. Michaela Gronwald also with 18 to help lead her team to victory. So Illini West is moving on inside of their bracket. Illini Bluffs advanced earlier in the day by eliminating Griggsville from the winner's bracket as we go to the scores. 53-33 to 33 was your final. And Havana will play Illini West next as that rivalry gets rekindled. 57-29, to 29, Havana advances on to take on Illini West. How about the West Central girls early in the day taking on Triopia? That's Brian Bettis, fresh off his 400th career victory. Congratulations to him. The youngster, Miss Likes, doing work from the outside. She's going to knock down back-to-back -back threes here to help cap her team 68-17 to win over Triopia in the morning. So we'll advance to the next set of highlights. That's the late set of highlights today where the All-Stater, Miss Abby Lashman and company were taking care of business. They were the nine seed taking on the eight seed planes. How about Sydney Rock from the outside with a three? She put the Cougars up 10. Amber Clouser trying to bring planes back with a nice take right here. Miss Lashman just way too much in this ballgame. She had 25, looking every bit the All-Stater in this one as Central hangs on. West Central hangs on to win. 61-56 to was your final. Up next for them, well, it will be a showdown with South Fulton, who was a winner 54-25 to over Rushville Industry. Earlier in the day, Rushville Industry knocked off West Hancock 42-38 to to advance into that game. Also with the Lady Tiger Classic, We've got Lewiston knocking off Beards down 60 to 19. Lewiston then upsets Brown County by the final count of 47-36 to advance as well. One other note to pass along to you, our condolences to the entire Fort Madison athletic community on the death of Tom Wall Jasper, 
football coach, respected teacher and educator, passed away in the Des Moines area last night. Great man. Again, our condolences to the entire Bloodhound football family and the entire community and to the Wall Jaspers as well. Huge overtime coming your way tomorrow. Wrestling and all your tournament semifinal, quarterfinal, and fun from every venue. We'll see you then tomorrow. 10.30, everybody.